Coming to this area is called the East Side. Um, I guess uh, famously known as as uh, Little Puerto Rico. Um, but out here, basically, um, this is the railroad. This is under. This is where you really, really come into the East Side. Always flashbacks, man. Every time I come here, you got you have a whole bunch of Spanish restaurants. Um, Little bodegas, you're gonna hear music blaring and, and bumping at all times. But there was this, this place carried a lot of kids, man, a lot of homicides, um, especially on the street. This was my stomping grounds. This is one of the houses I lived in. Yeah. See the police roaming around. This is, this is where I used to be, man. I used to sit right here on this corner. Sit on this corner right there on the stoop, eat some Chinese food, and sell drugs all day. That's what I did um, in order to, I guess, to survive, in order to eat. I had to do what I had to do, I guess, in a sense, unfortunately. I did eight-year sentence in the federal prison. Um, I, I realized that you know, we needed a plan to come back home and I started getting my life together, starting to do what I needed to do, get my education. Um, by the grace of God, I finished college, got my degrees, um, double degrees, and decided to come back to, to my community to, to help these kids do the same, you know, to, to make that transition if they so choose to, you know, because this, this life is addictive too, you know, it's, it's, once you're trained in it, once you live through it, you get comfortable and this is all you know. One day I came home to, to find my mom, you know, crying at the kitchen table, saying she didn't have nothing to, to feed us, we didn't have no food to eat. And I guess that was that was the first day of my life that I um, uh, went out into the streets. Uh, you know, I looked for work, applied in many places, couldn't get in because I was too young. The one place that did accept me, fortunately, was was the streets. So I'm the program director of Street Safe Bridgeport. Street Safe is a diversionary program. We're non-law enforcement based, although we're not anti-police. And we're basically here to try to help the young people in the community. We mostly get referrals for males ages 14 to 24. We have an MOU with both of the hospitals, Bridgeport and now the Old St. Vincent's, which is now Hartford Healthcare. So when someone is shot, murdered, um, they call us to help with de-escalation and mediation and um, consoling the families. And we also mentor the young men. And so everybody who works for Street Safe is a credible messenger. They have the experience, they've been there, done that. And so they want to give back to the community and leave it better than what they found it. Tell us a little bit about like this area. You know, I'm familiar with it because I, I, I've spent part of my life here too, but this area used to be called um, uh, Father Panic Village. This, was, this is James Brown Park. And it's across the street at the end of where the project used to be at facing, facing the river. Mm -hmm. um, but tell us a little bit about your experience growing up here. Father um, Panic Village, Bridgeport, Connecticut. I was born and raised here in Father Panic, grew up in Building 4, Apartment 307. Our building used to actually, the back of our building faced the park. Um, you know, we had good experiences here. Even though we were growing up in the housing projects, it didn't seem like we were in the projects because it was more of a community. It was actually a village. People cared about each other. Of course, things happened. There were crimes, but people looked out for each other and cared about each other. We used to have... Um, doors on our project hallways, you know, and our parents took pride in keeping the hallways clean and keeping yeah, the bad yeah. people out. Going way back now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, we, 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 we grew up rich, 
rich with a, a support of people around us telling us to do the right thing. If somebody saw me crossing the street, they would stop what they're doing and help me across yeah. the street. Just look out for me. We went to the church down the street. There was Harold Spang's store, Al's Market. He had an arcade in there. And you know, it was just all love, you know. They cared about us. When it started getting bad, when that crack epidemic hit, is when I saw the worst of things, but there were still people who cared, you know. People who live in places like this, they're all not bad, and they want the best too, and they want the best for their families and for themselves. People just can't always help the conditions that they live in. Um, but yeah, we, we were still like a loving family. Everybody knew everybody. If I needed a cup of sugar or my mother needed a, a cup of sugar, she could go knock on your mother, grandmother door, your mother's door and get it and vice versa. So right. we, right. just, we just thought we had it good growing up. Yeah. I can remember being five years old, man, and six years old, and they walk us from Watersville to Hall Neighborhood House, which big up salute to Hall Neighborhood House yes. because they were a big staple in the community of Father Panic Village in the east side. Yes. And they did a lot of things um, to help increase cultural awareness. They used to have the Harambe, the original Harambe. Yes. Be over there. You know, they used to bring, I remember as a kid, they used to bring um, the black cowboys and they would bring their ponies and their horses over there and the kids would be able to ride them. And had they not done that, I mean, I'm quite sure growing up here, I would have never, you know, seen a horse or anything like that. Um, it was a really, really, I always felt, even though people outside my community said my neighborhood was bad, I always felt like it was the safest place. Right. For some reason. And you had good people there. You know, I can remember being a kid when, when um, the Black Panthers were the one who originated that free breakfast program yes. Hall Neighborhood House, um, you know, end up taking it over. And everybody knew you could go to Hall Neighborhood House and you could get free breakfast, man, or before you before you before you go to school. And, and thinking back on it, there were just things that we had to learn because of the violence. Mm -hmm. We me and my brother used to have to learn back in seventy eight, man, as kids, like, you know, kids say it's bad now, but we learned in seventy eight. My grandmother taught us you hear gunshots get to the ground, you gotta yes. run to the hallway. That's back in 78, man. Um, so the conditions, you know, were there because there were underlying conditions that caused those problems. Right. Poverty, ignorance, deficient educational system, lack of opportunity, especially when, no the jobs. when the factories left Bridgeport. Yes. There wasn't a lot of jobs, especially for black and Latino men. How, how do you think growing up where we grew up at prepared you for the work that you do now? Well, I feel like I saw a little bit of everything growing up, and I have parents who taught me right from wrong. Even at times when they were wrong or did wrong, they taught me right from wrong, and they taught me that, I always say all the time, I'm perfectly flawed. And so, and they also taught me that it's okay to make mistakes, but you could change that and you could rectify that. So mm -hmm. that was always important to me, and I, and I raised my son the same way. You're not perfect, you're perfectly flawed, work hard and you could get anything you want. So I think it's important for us to just try to support and guide our youth and young adults and just encourage them to do their best and try to help them find opportunities and resources that will be beneficial to them. Show them something different. And, that, and that's the thing that you brought up about um, the gym and all of those programs. Even though we grew up in these conditions, we were able to experience and see different things. So it opened up our minds a little more to want to see what was outside of these projects and the confines. So I always wanted a little more. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to do more. And so that's what I did. I'm still in Bridgeport. Um, you know, I'm a college graduate. I'm still working in my community. Um, I love my community and one day I will leave my community, but I, I will always hold it near and dear to my heart. and and I appreciate all of the experiences that I had here. How important do you think it is that, you know, for being able to communicate with our community, it should, should be someone from the community. How important do you think that is? I think that's extra important because people relate more to people who have their own experiences. That's just nature. So I feel like if I see someone who's doing great and who came from where I came from and got out, that's hope for me. That's a light shining on me that tells me I could do it. It might be 50 other people saying I can't, but that one person is my glimmer of hope that I can, and I will. It's hard, it's hard for people to leave this life. 
hard for people to change their lives. You know, um, this is this is Washington Park, one of the notorious parks on the east side as well. It's known for a lot of drug activity, known for a lot of homicides and fights. This is where gangs would come up and meet and and, and just fight. Um, but like I said, I transitioned and, and now we come out here reaching, trying to reach the youth, trying to get them to understand that this is a better way, a better life. I'm out there for them. I know you spent a lot of time here growing up on this side of town. A lot of time. I wasn't playing basketball though, man. <laughs> well, as a little kid I'm talking about, you know. <laughs> yeah, little kid I used to run around here, man, and, and it was still, you know, it was still rough, man. I, it's like I didn't get into sports until, you know, my, my, my early teens. Mm, okay. that's, that's when I started, you know what I mean? Like really um, getting into sports, unfortunately. And that, that was just trying to escape, you yes, know sir. what I mean? Yes, escape, I guess. Escape the reality. That my reality that, that, that I was living in. Absolutely. Right now, I'm currently a supervisor for an outreach team. Um, name of the program is Street Safe. We come out to the community now and, and we try to reach the youth and, and try to help them find resources to actually transition out of a, a culture that swallows us up. You know, um, culture, unfortunately, of violence, drug activity, you know, um, basically hopelessness, you know, poverty. We try to show them that there's, there's, there's a way out of out of this type of culture, this type of setting. Um, helping them get jobs, putting them in, in you know, at, athletic activities um, to, you know, get them structured and, and understand, you know, the, the, the basis and foundation of teamwork and, 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 and hard work um, to accomplish a, you know, goal and task. Bring them to the gym to exercise and, you know, to, to get their bodies right. Um, yes, we conduct workshops, you know, get their minds right, you know, just to show them the comparison of, of, of what is, is normal and what is abnormal, you know, when it, when it comes to culture and, and, uh, and tradition and, and things of that nature. You know, we, we already have um, established relationships and we just try to expand that relationship with other kids that are around that know each other and things of that nature, just to let them know like, hey, we've been there we did that. If you want something different, we're here to help. How important do you think that is in, this, in doing this work to try to prevent future situations, brother? How, how important do you think that ties in? It's, it's very important, man, because, you know, even, even with me growing up, you know, as much as a strong mother I had, you know, my mom was so strong and, and, and you know, she, she tried to hold things down. Um, it was hard for her to understand what I was going through as a youth in this community, you know? Right, right. To her, it was, it was just work and home. To me, it was the streets and my peers, and it, it was a lot of things that, that I had to live up to out here, and, and she couldn't understand those things, you know what I mean? So, you know, having someone that does understand, having a male, especially a male figure that does understand, you know, not, not to take anything away from the moms, because like I said, my mom was strong, and she was beautiful and she tried to do the best that she could by me. But sometimes it takes a man to show a man that life is different, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So it's very important that we come back and, and we try to talk to these kids, whether they listen or not listen, you know, I, you know there, there was just one person um, that I remember that tried to say something positive to me and I remember it to this day because that was unfortunately the only positive words that I, I, I did, you know what I mean, get. So it was a school teacher. You know, um, and he, he saw, you know, he saw my intelligence. He, he tested me several times. I was in his class and he would say, you know, he would see me come in with the new gear and see me come in and, and, you know, I'm absent a whole bunch of times. But when I come in and did the work, he's like, you know, he, he I remember him saying, it was like, you're worth more than what you think, you know, and, and, and there's more for you out there. Like if, if if you could you know stand the test of time, yes, sir. I didn't understand it at that point. You know what I mean? And I never had you know sat him down to even ask him what he meant by that. You know, but 
I remember, you know what I mean? And and now I, I understand what he meant. We only live what we learn, brother. Exactly. And a lot of times they, you know, the greater society blocks resources from coming in the community and also, you know, it, it destabilizes families. And when there's no man there, um, you know, you're not born with a manual on how to be a man. You learn through observation. And when there's no man there, like you said, your mom was the greatest person in the world, like all of our mothers, grandmothers, but they just can't teach us how to be a man. They can do a good job at trying. And then what happens is by nature, you looking for the male in your environment, and the male that you attach to is one who's destabilized, man. work with at-risk kids that's ages 14 through 24, essentially I just go back in and give somebody and give these kids um, the guidance and hope that help me get to where I'm at. And if not help me, but some of the stuff that people forgot or didn't get to help them get to where they need to be. And some, like right now I'm, I'm finishing up my degree. I should have my bachelor's degree in three weeks. So, you know, yes, that that's yes, something that I'm looking forward to. And, um, yes, sir. I, it's very important that, you know, we have to be in it's, uh, the, 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 the legitimate term is credible messenger. It's, it's kind of important that we become the credible messengers, give back to the community and, and speak their voice and let people know that there is an opportunity and there is a chance. Even though our community is disenfranchised, there's a lot of resources that we don't have access to. What do you think is the one, the one thing or the one person that really was that 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 positive image in your life, man. Growing up on this side of town. Um, I, I would have to give it to Tony. Tony Montana. <laughs> Oliver Tubman. Yes, Tony sir. Fly, yes, Fly, Fly. Middle name is Tony, so right, right, right. so I go by Tony. Tony was an inspiration to me and uh, I didn't know the, the obstacles right. and hurdles that Lake, brother. Bless his family. See you. I didn't know the obstacles and hurdles that he had to go through that, you know, would, no one actually thinks about, like, as a kid, you just think they're giving you a hard time. Right, you don't necessarily right, right. know that there's a reason, there's a, a ma there's a reason to all the madness that, that they go through and say. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And Fly, and for the people that don't know, Fly, Oliver Tubman, is a brother that brought a lot of good, man, to the community, man. Fly was the reason why, um, so I, um, eighth grade, I did terrible eighth grade. I, 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 I didn't go to school for two months. My cousins moved down south, so the last month and a half, I went, uh, I, my mother allowed me to go and go down to Georgia with them. Yes, sir. So I, I did all that, What's and up? then Fly gave me a call when I was in Georgia. He's like, yo, you want to go to Kobe? I'm like, I don't know, my grades probably ain't good enough or whatever. So he's like, I got you. As soon as you come back, you take the test. I took the test, I got into Kobe, and that started me on the trajectory of a positive role. But you know, life with life comes hiccups and you know, that led me back here. But if it wasn't for his 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 push, I wouldn't even have made it into Kobe. Cause Harden would have ate me up freshman year. If I would have went to a public high school my freshman year, they would have got me. And that's a blessing. And, 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 and see, in saying that, th this is so important because how does that make you feel the same way that you just talked about Fly and what he did? How does that make you feel, my brother, that there's some young man out there who might be saying the same thing about you because of the work that you do and the impact that you have? How does that make you feel? I'm humble. It, it, it would humble me, but I don't think that I could ever be as impactful as the people that were above me. So to even be on the same platform or on the same level or just be mentioned in the same sentence would be like, it's glorifying. So knowing that now you're part of a solution, man, that gotta be a good feeling. Yeah, it, it's, you know? it, it, it's like, it, it doesn't even give you the, the, um, the, there's, there's no words to even put together to, to, for you to understand how it makes someone feel, how it makes me feel. I mean, you would know personally, but how it, it just, I can't even put words to it. When I think of redemption, I think of somebody like you, man. Somebody that, you know, like every young man that's out here, we had the potential, we made a wrong decision based on the circumstances in our environment, and now you came back strong in a powerful way, man, trying to eliminate some of the issues in our community, man. 
and, and the, the, one of the reasons why we're right here filming, I don't know if that, the reason why we're right here is because this is actually where I was shot. Mm. And then the guy from the store came out, took his shirt off, wrapped it around me, wow. and picked me up. Well, they laid me right here until the ambulance came. It was in the morning time, around 10, 1030, I remember. And they heard some uh, shotguns. I went outside to see what's going on, you know, be careful, you know. And they saw Ekwan with his friend, both of them, like, uh, on the left side over here, down. Right away, I went there. He was lying down. I put him, like, a little bit up, you know, just to, to make him, like, a little breathing. And they came back to the store, and they called the 911 for ambulance, you know. And they went back to them, and they, you know, took some water or something to... I don't, I don't, lie, I don't know a lot on the saving people, but I do whatever I, <laughs> I can, you know. And they know him like since he was a little kid, you know, I've been here for almost 16 years. So I, I try my best and they, I be seeing a lot of shooting, a lot of kids die, a lot of people being like shot on this area. It's mad, but you know, this is the east side, you know, the ghetto, <laughs> like they said. Hopefully things get better. Like this was a, a cornerstone of my, my entire life of negativity, but now at the same time, these are the same point where I go to and I'll pick up a kid or pick up somebody from here and try to let them know wow, that they don't man. have to go through the same struggles and circumstances that I went through that led me here. Hove did it so that you don't have to go through that. That's right. That's right, brother. And, 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 and I, I know that's real cliche and it might sound like just this far-fetched idea, but no one ever really feels that someone else has felt or experienced the traumas and things that they have. And I want them to know that I've experienced it, I've done it, and now I've battled it, I'm on this side, and I want to help you get to this side without actually going through the same yes, obstacles yes, that I had to go through. Yes, sir. Street Safe is a program that understands, understands what the mother's going through, understands what you're going through as a youth. If you're between the ages of 14 and 24, please understand, man, somebody on our, on our team, on our squad, understands exactly what you're going through, whether it's being at home with no father, whether it's having a hustle just to eat, whether it's being in a gang and don't know your way out because you already know, you know, the violence is crazy out here and you gotta be protected one way or another, you know what I mean? Whether you went to jail when you, you're trying to come home and really make a change, we've been, all, we've been through all those phases of transition, man. And by the grace of God, we're here, we made it. If you wanna make it, if you wanna be that one to make a change and, and to be the pillar in your family, to stand up and make the change and, and, and through, for your culture, for your family, then hit us up, man. We're here, we're here to help you.